crunchiness too. This cake has everything. My name is Bill Yassis, and I was the pastry chef for President George W. Bush, First Lady Laura Bush, President Barack Obama, and First Lady Michelle Obama. In this special episode of Presidential Eats, we are going to make Dundee cake. The pedestrian name is fruit cake, but this is so much better than any fruit cake you've ever had. This recipe came to me from one of the members of the team of the pastry team at the White House. Her name is Margie Finneran, an absolutely extraordinary person. And she had done some work at the American Embassy in England. And when she was there, she learned how to make this cake called the Dundee cake. And it was so good, I had to make it for our guests and it became one of the most popular of the desserts during the Obama era. The first thing we're gonna do is cream the butter and sugar. So with the paddle attachment, we're going to whip the butter and the brown sugar together, incorporating air into those two. We're also gonna add honey into this recipe, and honey, because it doesn't evaporate, keeps the crumb moister. We let this run for three to five minutes, so we really get that fluffy texture. It should look fluffy and aerated. My first Christmas in the Obama White House, uh, had a very special theme. It was called Reflect, Rejoice, Renew. And I think this is a great personification of really the feeling in the country at that time. I can remember uh, the night that President Obama was elected. I lived near the White House and there was so much noise outside, I got up, went down to the street to see what was happening. And Pennsylvania Avenue from one end to the other was full, packed full of people. It was a joyous moment of hope. That theme of uh, reflect, rejoice, renew really seemed appropriate for that Christmas. The next ingredient that we add is the eggs, and I always crack them into their own container before putting them in to the uh, mix because eggshells. I like to crack eggs on the counter and then put them into your receptacle because this tends to spill this. It also, for some reason, doesn't make it as easy to open the egg. So we're going to sift the flour like I do in my other recipes. And this time there is uh, only salt and baking powder. Looking around the kitchen here at Delish, uh, it's about the size of my kitchen in the White House if you sort of stretched it out and made it long, but about the same square footage, uh, which is to say pretty small. It used to be a ware washing area where plates were washed and it got turned into a full on pastry kitchen that can produce uh, food for like those big events, like 600, 700 people at a time. Movable shelves that you can put 20 sheet pans on at a time and you would find them in every nook and cranny of the White House in December. Next, we're going to pour the flour into the mixture here. Now I'm gonna tell you about the fruits that go into this cake. In old fashioned fruit cakes, we used maraschino cherries and some of them were dyed green and some red. Um, but today we try to avoid food coloring. So we use just natural fruits that have a lot of color like cranberries, candied orange peel, candied papaya, candied pineapple, and then currants and raisins, both golden raisins and dark raisins. And then we splash them with a little bit of rum and press it down in there so they really soak up that rum overnight. We used aged rum, 12-year-old aged rum from Panama. It has a really nice smoky, oaky flavor. You can really use any rum. It does two things. One, of course, it adds flavor to your cake, but it also softens the fruit so that it begins to absorb the liquid of the, of the rum and makes it a much nicer texture when it goes into the cake. These are the fruits that we soaked overnight, and you can add, for a nice touch of green, some Sicilian pistachios, but you don't have to soak the pistachios. So one of the great things that we experienced during the Obama administration was the house became open to a lot more and to a much wider diversity of people. And one of the traditions that uh, was sort of established during the Obama administration was a recognition of religions that perhaps were not 
recognized as much before. One of the new traditions that was included in the Obama years was a Seder for Passover. And uh, the origin of this was that during his campaign, there was a difficult moment, his numbers were dropping, and he happened to walk by a room in a hotel where members of his staff were sitting around a meal. And he said, oh, what's going on here? And they said, well, we're having a Seder. Would you like to join? And he did. Um, so that group became like this core group that celebrated Seder with uh, the President and Mrs. Obama every year after that in the White House. Uh, after that Seder on the campaign trail, things began to look better. His poll numbers went up. And so in his mind, I think he had sort of like this was a uh, optimistic moment in the campaign. Also special about this holiday were, were the plates that were used uh, to serve the meal. China at the White House, plates and porcelain, is a huge deal. There's an entire room devoted to China that has been collected over the years. Even the first pieces of China were contributed by George Washington himself. So in the case of the Seder, for example, choosing the plate was very important. One year, the China from the Harry Truman administration was chosen, and then the later years, this was a big deal, Abraham Lincoln's China was used during the Seder, uh, during that Passover. And uh, it took like a week of sort of convincing the curators that yes, we could actually bring Abraham Lincoln's China out of storage. Um, but it was a really moving moment, I thought, uh, to commemorate that special day. So these are obviously uh, precious artifacts uh, and it's part of our country's history. Imagine how many dinners they've been used for and certainly there is some breakage. I mean, eventually a plate's gonna have to break. You do not want to be the person that breaks that plate. <laughs> there is like a week's work of paperwork if you break presidential China. Okay, now we're adding the fruits to the Dundee cake. Get all that good rum in there. Even though these are non-stick pans, uh, you don't want to take a chance because things tend to stick even in non-stick pans. So not only do I spray it with a non-adhesive spray, but I line it with parchment paper. You cut the size that fits into your pan, okay? And now we know that they fit. Now we're going to spray the pan. This is going to help the paper to stick. This way there's no chance that your Dundee cake is going to stick to the bottom of the pan and then you get half the cake out when you bang it on the counter. The parchment also helps you pull it up. Get it right in the crease so there's no air pocket underneath. And this will help you get a nice clean edge on the Dundee cake. We're going to transfer this batter into our loaf pans. Then we're going to carefully place some whole almonds on the top for decoration. Now we have the almonds decorated on the top. We're gonna to put them in the oven at 325 for about 50 minutes. You're probably wondering about the gingerbread house. Uh, it was one of the big events each year at the White House and you can't talk about holidays at the White House without talking about gingerbread house. My favorite one was in 2013 when we uh, made a replica of FDR's fireplace. So. While he was in the White House, he had commissioned a fireplace to be made out of tiles, these uh, blue tiles that depicted scenes all over America. And uh, that became part of uh, his fireplace in the library. After that, it was taken out and went to the FDR library. We recreated that in sugar, so we made sugar tiles. And then the rest of the fireplace was made out of Springerly cookies. So we made those Springerly cookies several hundreds, three, four hundred, maybe more, uh, in order to create our springily cookie FDR fireplace. Now you know what the China Room is. Good, because that's where we assemble these gingerbread houses. Uh, there's no other place in the White House that has enough room for all of us to come together. It takes like four or five people to assemble it. They take it up into the state dining room. Tarps are put down so that we don't damage the floor or the carpeting and then it's placed in the state dining room. They're ready. Here we have a mixture of water, honey, and rum, which is our soak. We're going to take the uh, finished Dundee cake out of the mold 
and soak it in this uh, preparation, turning it over like a sponge and letting it absorb all that delicious. So this adds flavor, obviously, but it also adds shelf life. The fact that we're putting this rum in here, it's gonna coat the outside and help to preserve these cakes longer. If they are wrapped well in plastic wrap, they can last for months in the refrigerator. Okay, the last step is to put it into the oven for just about four to five minutes at 350. That's gonna evaporate any extra liquid off the top. Once that's ready, we're gonna take them out, let them cool, and then we use uh, sort of long strips of these candied fruit to decorate the top. Uh, this way, if we were to serve it as part of a banquet on a banquet table, they really shine among the other desserts. For serving, wait until they're cool. They're much easier to cut and they hold together better. Slice them thin and shingle them on a nice tray, a sort of holiday style tray. This dessert really smells like the holidays. Uh, one thing I think that made it popular was the texture. It has a very soft crumb, uh, but then the chewy candied fruits inside and of course you do have that rum flavor from being soaked in the rum after it's baked. People just came back for more and more. Uh, one of the great things about this recipe is that once you have soaked it in the rum and wrap it, it lasts forever. <laughs> so these are the type of things you can start in October or November, get it out of your way for your, uh, your holiday entertaining, and then just uh, slice it and serve it at room temperature. So. Fruitcake has a bad rap in America because there were so many bad ones. They were that dense, dark, like you couldn't taste any cake. It was just the, the gross fruits that were stuffed into it. This is on another level. Crunchiness too. This cake has everything. Don't be afraid of the fruitcake. And for other recipes, holiday recipes, go to delish.com or for Still more recipes, go to my own book, The Sweet Spot.